Hi, hey, hello, everyone. Once again, it's time for Freezer Treats. From the Icebox Radio Theater, this is the feature where we unearth, thaw out, exhume something from the past of the IBRT, a show that maybe you've never heard, or maybe you haven't heard in a very long time, and give you a little sample and a link to the original show if you'd like to go back and listen to it all, which we encourage you to do. And today's show is entitled The Trial of W.W. W. Butler. Uh, first of all, it's a live recording recorded at the Rainier Community Center. So we do ask for the normal set of allowances toward uh, uh, recording quality. We do the best we can when we're in a live a studio audience type situation. And the other thing that's unique about this is this is one of the few uh, history plays that we've ever done here at the IBRT. History play in the same sense as uh, Shakespearean history plays, where you take an event from actual history and build a drama around it. And this story, the story of W.W. W. Butler, is a true story, part of uh, Kuching County history. Kuching County, of course, the county that contains International Falls, Minnesota, goes back to the 19th century in which uh, a man was accused of robbing his own bank, of absconding with the money and running away. And uh, he claimed until his dying breath that he uh, that he did not rob his bank, that bandits showed up and forced him to open the vault, but that didn't explain why he ran away. And, uh, well, you know what? I'm not going to tell you any more about that particular story. I'll just uh, invite you to go check it out and listen to the whole play, The Trial of W.W. W. Butler. There's a framing device, and that is a meeting of the Historical Society uh, that features Karen Schickel and uh, Jim Yunt and Tom Bement, and then uh, Amelia Sumner comes in, as a high school student looking to do a history project, and that's uh, part of the section that we'll listen to right now. The full resources of the Borderland Historical Society are at your disposal, dear. Uh, That's right. Uh, Ask whatever questions you want. I don't want to make anyone upset, you know? I mean, after what just happened a minute ago... Oh, that's just our old argument. Pay no mind, dear. We're like a couple of old cats... Howling on a fence. Ah, toothless cats at that. (laughs) Okay, well then, I think you'll like the event I've chosen. It's like the most exciting thing I found in the whole book. Oh, you're keeping us in suspense. Okay, I'll just let it out. I want to do a play about the Great Rainy Lake bank robbery. Oh, dear God, Uh. no. What? What's wrong? And, 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 and nothing, dear. Nothing. Uh, no, of course not. Nothing at all. Uh, Be- Becky, choose, choose something else. Don't be ridiculous, Ed. <sighs> yes. Well, the child is right. The Rainy Lake Bank robbery is one of the most interesting chapters in our region's history. Agreed. <laughs> That's the last time they'll agree on anything tonight. Did I do it again? Oh, Becky, you're a prodigy. I've seen people spend hours in the museum before they set these two on an argument, but <laughs> you managed to do it twice in less than ten minutes. Oh, no. And it's the grand champion of all arguments to boot. Edward, I have no idea what you're talking about. No, he's just yammering on as usual. Too few people know the story of the Rainy Lake bank robbery, and it is our duty as the historical society to pass it on to the next generation. Of course. So... Let's pass it on. Uh, What do you know about the bank robbery, Becky? Just that the banker was accused of robbing his own bank. Yes, that's right. W.W. Butler was the man's name. He claimed a robber tricked him into opening his vault, cleaned him out, and took off by canoe. Claimed? Oh, no. Oh, no. That is exactly what happened. Oh, come now. We're not going to go through all that again, are we? Are they? I don't really see a way to avoid it. You see, uh, Amelia there... uh... You're too emotional on this issue, and you know it. After all... Oh, here it comes. Oh, there's no way you could be very impartial about your family. You mean... Amelia is a direct descendant of the banker W.W. W. Butler. And the evidence against him was purely circumstantial. And a whole slew of prominent citizens of Rainy Lake City signed a testimonial to Butler's character in the Vermilion Iron Journal, July 14th, 1895 edition. One of the most prominent of which recanted it all in a story later on. Uh, that John Berg character, Bosch. He had a weak chin. And was known to drink. They were all known to drink. 
It was a gold rush town. Oh, Pat, Amelia, please. Isn't there a better way to settle this than arguing? It's always worked before. Yes. Don't fix what ain't broken. All right, there's Amelia Sumner, as well as Jim Yunt, and Karen Schickel, and Tom Bement in the trial of W.W. W. Butler. I invite you to listen to the whole show. There's a link to that podcast, as well as a link uh, directly to the episode in the show notes of this episode of Freezer Treats. And I'll be back next Monday with another morsel from within the deep freeze of the Icebox Radio Theater. <laughs>